Hello, fellow Odooers, and welcome back. Up to this point, we've seen everything related to project and timesheet management. We know how to make use of almost all the organizational tools in the project app and how to follow up on our project's costs and profitability. Now it's time for us to start keeping an eye on reporting. Reports allow us to get valuable information. The insights can come from comparing planned hours versus effective hours, team performance, and from the comparison of specific metrics at certain periods, to mention a few examples. This will influence decision-making processes. Therefore, we need to check them regularly throughout a project's lifetime. They are also used to better communicate with stakeholders and customers. So let's jump into Stealthy with Database and see how it works. So from the dashboard, we'll drive straight into the project. Here, we'll go see the reporting menu right next to configuration, and we can see all the different reports Odoo has available to us. First, we'll start with a task analysis. The task analysis allows us to get a good rundown of everything that's going on on all the different tasks. In this case, we have a bar graph, we also have a line, pie chart, etc. This allows us to get a good understanding, okay, where are our tasks, what projects they are in. We can remove certain projects if we know, or stages in projects if we know we don't want to see them anymore and because they're not as important. A good example of that would be the internal one because this is all for unbillable tasks. More on that in the previous video. Now, from here, we can go to pivot view where a lot of the more inform informative details are going to come into play. So right now we have the pivot view where we have the X axis and the Y axis, which allows us to get a lot of information here. So first up is the measures. The measure will give us if the information we're looking at. For example, effective hours, which will be the t uh, amount of time you've logged. We have the planned hours, which is the amount of time you're expected to work on a task. And the remaining hours, which is just the difference. We also have count, so you have an understanding of how many tasks are in that category. So for example, we have 10 in the research and development category. We can then also group by. Grouping by will allow us to quickly and easily just create a hierarchy here. So typically it's good to go from macro to micro, project, stage, and assignees if we need to. Uh, we can then even switch it up for a go stage, then assignees, removing project if we don't need to see it. We can even actually add project here if it helps us for any reason. Of course, depending on the way the data is formatted, it might be a bit much. Now, for example, continuing along our original line, wanted to go back to project stage and assignee. For example, let's only look at any tasks that are blocked that need immediate uh, assistance. So filters, add custom filter. We have the campaign states and blocked. So we know these are the ones that need highest priority. What we can also do is remove anything that is closed, just to focus on the important details. Now, going back to the metrics, or the measures, sorry, we can also look at days to deadline. These are how many days we are away from the deadline that we need to reach. Then we can add a filter for the exact deadline. Maybe let's look at February. And what that allows us to do then is a, a menu item called comparison, or a filter item rather, which allows us to look at a previous period or previous year with a percentage difference between over those time periods. That's giving us a lot of good information about how well we're progressing or regressing when it comes to our performance. Then we also can look at the working days to assign and working days to close, whether we choose days or hours. The way this is going to work, essentially, is going to look at every single uh, task or project we've got going on and essentially, okay, how many, how many days has it been since it's been created to assign? The moment a task enters the new stage, that's when the clock is going to start counting. Take into consideration the working hours, because any time outside of the working hours isn't going to count towards this, and then come with a, okay, has it been assigned yet? The moment it's assigned, that's when it stops. The same concept applies for the days to close. So the moment it is open to the moment it is closed, how long has that taken to, uh, how long has it happened? Now, the way Odoo determines whether it's been closed or not is whether the stage that's on the project is set to default to fold. If it's folded by default, that is a done stage, and the moment a task moves into that stage, we're good to go. Now from here, we also have burn down chart, another nice report, 
it's specific to a project. It can't be on all projects because the way it looks essentially is you're looking at the different quantity of tasks per stage over time. And the stage is determined by the color coding. So uh, in a project that has a finite time period, something that will end at some point in time, you would like to see the tasks over, uh, decrease over time. Now, if you have a project that is ongoing, of course, this will fluctuate. This gives you a good idea to see, okay, where are most of our tasks? What do we need to focus our, all of our energy on? With that, that covers most of the different projects reporting you need. As a quick reminder, with Odoo, every screen is a report, whether it's a specific dedicated report or a report in a specific project with all the different views from going from Kanban, list, all the way to pivot. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, have a great day.